the BYD sports car, the BYD Yang Wang U9, just smashed through the electric vehicle top speed record, hitting 472.5 kilometers per hour. I feel pretty sure that it could have gone faster. I think maybe they backed out because they were, you know, it was, it was going to take off. Literally, the 293 miles an hour uh, top speed run took place on August the 8th, so a couple of weeks ago, in Germany at the ATP Automotive Testing Pappenberg facility, which is where they test a lot of the world's biggest speed records and uh, the fastest vehicles that we can really buy, like the Bugatti Chiron. The driver was the German pro racer called Mark Bassang, who actually already held the EV top speed record before this, and he described it as one of the wildest drives of his career. And at that uh, that speed, the car actually had front end lift. It was unstable, and you could see that it was darting around a lot. And it was only the torque vectoring system that actually stopped things getting messy. That's what they said. The car itself is the BYD Yangwang U9 track edition. I actually made a video about it last year. I actually went to see it for a day. I'll link that in the description and put it at the end uh, on the two boxes for you so you can click on it. It uses a quad motor system, each motor producing 750 horsepower or 555 kilowatts. So on every single wheel, 750 horsepower. So combined, just under 3,000 horsepower. The platform is BYD's E4 system, running a 1200 volt ultra high voltage architecture. Each of those motors spins up to 30,000 RPM and all four wheels can actually uh, have their torque adjusted 100 times a second. Thank you to the advanced control electronics. It even has BYD's DSUS X intelligent body control system, which can actually tweak the suspension in real time uh, to stabilize the ride at extreme speeds, which I think is probably needed. I think you can see beyond 350 kilometers per hour, it's, it's just ropey. And then you've got 400, and then you've got 450 kilometers per hour. It starts to look a bit like it's, it's darting around a bit. So the result of all of this is a power to rate ratio of about 1220 horsepower per ton, which actually beats the Bugatti Chiron 300 plus. That's uh, putting BYD, a company which is actually you know better known for mass market uh, pr you know production EVs like the BYD Seagull, for example, the Atto 3, the Atto, uh, Atto 2, directly up against the likes of Bugatti and Kianigzeg in terms of performance numbers. I do want to talk a little bit about the Yang Wang at the end from my personal experience because I think there are some really interesting things to say. For the record attempt, they actually fitted semi-slick tyres designed in collaboration with Gitti. I think you call it Gitti. G-I-T-I tyre. Gitti tyre. These had a special tread design and a knurling at the rim interface to stop the tyres actually slipping against the wheel under those insane loads, obviously. Like, if you put a rubber tyre on a wheel and the wheel is trying to turn with 750 horsepower yeah you know if the grip is the tie if the tire can grip the road then yeah you, you can't just have a bead for example so even in this video you can actually see the run it starts to float as it is approaching the limit really just at the end and then when they stop accelerating that's when you see most of it they even added an optional carbon fiber splitter to help push down the front but aerodynamics at you know 300 miles an hour are quite different, I think, uh, from what we can really grasp most of the time. It's so far out of our ordinary. The ability to keep it all cool is, what I, I think, what I'm impressed with. When you are effectively operating a very large heater or a heating element, you know, shoving out 2,200 kilowatts of energy, where does it go? Where does that energy go, really? It must be very hot after the run because I imagine they're pushing you know, the electronics to the limit because they probably can't displace that heat. They probably can't get it out of everything quick enough unless you know, everything has cooling fins on it times 100. It's insane, really. Now, this run broke the previous electric vehicle record of 263 miles an hour, which was actually set only a month before in the Rimac Navara R, so we've just gone from 263 to 293 miles per hour in a matter of four weeks. That's about 50 kilometers an hour faster in the space of a month. That's the interesting thing here, though, is that this run was only in a single direction. So traditional world record attempts actually take the average of two runs and they go against the wind uh, on the opposite direction and uh, on the gradient as well and then they take that average from that so you do they should do two runs but they didn't do that even with that though as a caveat 472.4 kilometers per hour has never been done 
even for a second, in any electric vehicle ever. So that's why this is a world record, really. It's uh, worth keeping in mind just how extreme this is at those speeds, the aerodynamics and the tyres and the motors and the cooling. Everything is just operating right on the limit. The driver talked about how unstable it started to feel uh, at the front end when he got above 400, but the car systems kept him in control. That's what he said. So obviously... It's really hard to drive a car above 400 kilometers per hour unless you've got some electronics involved. I guess that's kind of what they're saying. Unless they design it incredibly well, I guess. So that's what I think makes this run such a statement. Not just the number itself, but the, you know, the fact that BYD could actually put together a car that is capable of surviving those forces uh, mechanically, but also that the electronics and the hardware and that sort of stuff. So what do you make of this? Does it actually surprise you that BYD of all the companies now holds the record for the fastest EV in the world? And does this kind of uh, hypercar halo tech really help their everyday cars like the BYD Dolphin, the BYD Seagull? I'd really like to hear your thoughts on this in the comments. Some of my thoughts before I go. So my personal experience, I've been to see the car and I'll start with the good and then move on to the bad and then the most striking things. So when you see the car at first, it is very supercar-esque. It really is, has a presence, very, very nice to look at. It has that uh, presence that you'd want if you just spent lots of money. When you see the inside, it's very supercar-esque again, but it doesn't feel anywhere near as premium as a generic Lamborghini or something like that, or a Ferrari. It just doesn't, I don't think. I mean, they've gone at it with the um, Alcantara, maybe, if it is actually Alcantara, but uh, I definitely don't think they've figured that stuff out yet. How do you make a car actually feel very, very premium? It uh, looks like they have tried, but they just haven't cracked it yet. Uh, the seating position, not as nice as a Porsche or a Ferrari or anything like that, even if you sit in the fastest ones. It is also uh, generally big and wide. Too big and too wide, I should say. The brakes, huge. Tyres, huge. No doubt they're very expensive and they're very, very good. Paint is thin, so it's obviously that will help knock a couple of kilos off if they just do very little paintwork. And you can actually see uh, the, the carbon fibre through the paint actually in certain parts of it and you can feel how light it is when you touch it and try and open stuff and lift the boot and that sort of stuff it is fast obviously it's too fast to really care about i think past a certain point think of it like this do you really care how much oomph a plane has when you're taking off on a runway Probably not. You know it's going to get the job done. You can feel it's a jet engine. And, you know, being able to quantify uh, how much power you've got at any one point on the runway is kind of, yeah, makes no difference, I don't think. Would you know the difference if you were cruising on a flight from Brisbane to Dubai at 850 kilometres per hour or 950 kilometres per hour ground speed? Probably not. And you probably don't even care, to be honest, unless you're in a rush. But even though I'm saying this, BYD have clearly won based on the fact that I'm using aeroplanes to describe their car and how fast it is. And that's exactly what they want, I think. So, yeah, that's what I need to help me quantify the experience of going that fast. So that they've obviously won. It's fast. The biggest thing that I noticed when I was spending the day with the Yang Wang was uh, the key pretty much ordinary just feels like an ordinary key and all the tech in it didn't work very well actually that was kind of a bit you know annoying at times the keyless entry was tragic the door sensors that you have to wave your hand in front of like that on the door to get the door to open every maybe only worked every you know every 50 percent of the time something like that and i tried to open the car quite a bit and shut the doors and just have a play around with it at one point, I couldn't get out as well. It just it wasn't opening when I couldn't get out. That was an issue. And the car was stuck in its low position because you can alter the height of the car and the team couldn't actually figure out. It was the BYD team. They couldn't actually figure out how to get it out of race mode or on the physically. I mean, they could get it out of race mode, but it just wasn't lifting up off the ground. No idea why. Um, it was as though the suspension had sort of failed and just was not operating, so maybe it wouldn't have done all the other stuff that it needs to do, all the electronics, I don't know. So I have mixed feelings about it. Take it for what it is. It's a very big, beautiful, fast, hypercar-esque sort of thing. I'm not sure it is really an actual hypercar. Maybe it is. I mean, it's got the power, but all the other things about it don't really scream hypercar-esque when you sit in it and you, you know, you turn the steering wheel, and, you know, that sort of stuff. It just feels supercar, not hypercar. But uh, yeah, it's built by the company who makes the BYD Seagull. 
go figure. Thank you to all of these people who are the members on YouTube and Patreon. Uh, you're very welcome to join and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, just put below, and somebody, uh, me and other people, will, will comment. And, and uh, yeah, thank you for your time.